Hello, hello, welcome back everybody. My name is Jamie Leonard here with TCG Unlimited and today we have for you guys just a quick gameplay. Uh, this is our somewhat renowned Asusa Stacks. Uh, again, guys, I apologize. We probably didn't get to stream today, but uh, I didn't get home again until about 9 o'clock. Uh, so probably don't look forward to a stream until probably Saturday, maybe even Sunday, just depending on what time I get home. Uh, or back to the store, whichever happens first. Um, so yeah, but anyway, I wanted to try to at least get a video out. I would like to do a video a day, but I don't think that's going to happen, but we're going to try. Uh, played some games. Um, either the game would either lag out or... Uh, people would just take unnecessarily long to do the simplest plays and eventually like I played one game with Asusa we kind of got we got off to a decent start and then we just kind of hit a wall um, just several bad draws and we, our, just our acceleration was gone we drew too many big cards couldn't cast them uh, the game pretty much just stalled out for us while the other guys were just making like 30 tokens a turn and then at that point once I can't lock people out of the game uh, you guys know how it goes, it's over. Uh, so yeah. But you guys know my Asusa deck, it, um, it does what it does very well and probably better than any lands deck in the game. Uh, because yeah, it's a lands deck, but at the same time, it's a lands deck that just doesn't care about what your deck does. You can be a lands deck too, and we'll just nullify that. And we pretty much proved that here in this game. And like the guy even comp uh, comments like, you're going to strip mine the lands deck? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, because uh, I can outpace you. <laughs> you are running out of cards. I have card draw after card draw after card draw. <laughs> I'm not going to run out of cards. <laughs> I have land recursion from the grave, and eventually things are going to catch up with you. And eventually I'm going to draw into stacks pieces that doesn't let you untap for your big mana cards. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> but yeah, guys, we hope you enjoy. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start the game here real quick. Uh, to, you know, to start it off, like, the game even is like, yeah, you want to go first with a Sousa stacks? And I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> and you guys know how this is. It's literally just I open the hand. If I count more than two lands, we're good. And, like, just to make things worse, it's two lands... Memory Jar, Elf, Spokestack. Draw cards. I mean, what more? What more could you ask for, you know? But it's basically going to be uh, Omnath, uh, these two, and this. Uh, pretty much everybody sticks in there for a while, and then this guy will eventually go, yeah, no, I can't deal with this, and he's just out. But, you know, when we can go turn two Asusa, uh, double land drops. We're full power, you know. They're on two lands. I'm going to go into, you know, like, seven mana. They're just trying to get a board established, and that's pretty much all there was to it. And see, so, like, we just basically just drew three cards for free. Now we, we're pretty much back where we were. The only difference being is we now have uh, an insurmountable number of ways in which we can uh, remove uh, threats. And it pretty much only escalates from here. They don't. They still don't know what the deck does. Uh, so at this point, like I'm feeling pretty good. Like everything is going fine. Uh, we draw the Lotus Cobra a little bit late, but it does come in handy. Uh, so we're going to draw some more cards. You know, more land drop. Go ahead and get the uh, memory jar out there. We're going to use it on our next turn. And here's where it's kind of like gets funny because like I kind of halfway expected him to use the uh, the strip mine, but he doesn't. He uses it for Oracle, which I'm perfectly fine with. Uh, 
uh, because it, it's pretty much at this point where we kind of just start making uh, a lot of things irrelevant. And uh, this guy's going to attack us, which is fine. We're going to go down. But this is pretty much the only... Uh, this is pretty much the only source of damage we had the entire game. Uh, other than... Well, I'll explain when we get to it. But it's pretty much like the only source of damage we take throughout the, the majority of the game. I, I mean, at this point, playing Mono Red, like, I really wasn't... I didn't really care what this guy did at all. Uh, it was It was pretty much irrelevant. We go to our smokestack. They're not happy because they see what's coming. They know they can't get out of it. We draw a mana crypt. We draw uh, Crucible of Worlds, our exploration, our map. I mean, like, we're, we're set. We go exploration. We're going to go map. We're going to go use our map to go get our strip mine. We're going to take out, uh, you know, a single land here. Not a big problem. We get our uh, guy back, which is fine. We're pretty much setting pretty. Our smokestack's pretty much safe. No one touched it. Uh, down's going to come down, Omnath. I'm fine with it for now. You know, Omnath is not going to pose a threat to us. I mean, at this point, the problem is if this guy swings, right, he, gets, he loses his rune cap which is the only thing he has currently that's going to give him access uh, to his grave. And because I have a flyer, he's going to attack here. This guy is already scooped at this point. He sees the writing on the wall. He knows we're just too fast, and he can't keep up. He scoops. Uh, and pretty much this is just kind of where we just start kind of running away. Um, as you see, we draw our Crater Hoof Behemoth. And it's pretty much at this point, like, he's going to make the comment. He's like, you really going to you know, strip mine the lands deck? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, we're faster. You know, I'm going to take away your only source of go after my, uh, or, you know, get try to get around the smokestack. It's gone. Your, you know, his commander's gone. You're going to have to recast it. He costs too much. You know, this guy scoops at this point. And like you see, he says, you really going to you, you strip mine the lands deck? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. You, you don't scare me. You have to waste an entire turn to play a card to get all of your dudes back. That's all I needed. Because at this point, we could have just kept going. Well, that's cool. You're going to get a bunch of tokens. Yeah, uh -huh. okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Woo, tokens. <laughs> Yay, tokens at 38 life. I'm not sure he's going to get rid of my um, Maldrazi. That's fine. Not that big a deal. We're pretty much just going to draw into a bunch of things here. We're just going to go get more lands, get more mana. Go here. Draw more stuffs. Pretty much he's going to see this and goes, yeah, okay. <laughs> he's like, cool, I have toe weight. <laughs> he's like, 10, 20, 29. <laughs> 40, you know what, uh, 54, 64, 74, 88, 102. Of course, I had no way to give this haste, so he wasn't swinging, but still. It was still almost 100 damage that he was going to have to try to negate with uh, two twos.
Uh, but yeah, so that was the game. And as you guys can see, like we could have kept going, like there, there was really no stopping us. I mean, we could have just gone, okay, sure. Yeah. I mean, we could have just gone, yeah, I mean, we could have gone just in bringer, just done a lot of things. I mean, we could have easily just gone Elf for another, what, point of attack across the board. So, yeah, I mean, like, we were, we were lethal. We were swinging lethal. We were swinging, yeah, we were swinging lethal. I mean, without a doubt. I mean, he would have lost everything. Sacked two lands. And effectively had nothing. And then, you know, again, we're just going to come back and just start strip mining everything. And it's basically, it's like you have to draw a land recursion every single turn. The minute you don't draw a land recursion, the game is over. You might be a lands deck, but my deck is faster. But yeah, guys, that was the game. We hope you guys enjoyed. This is probably going to be a pretty short video. Um... I tried to do a little bit more talking in between and after just to try to fill in some space. Uh, but we do hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this is, again, you know, this was our Asuza. This is the deck we typically don't play very much uh, because I just don't find it very fun. Uh, although I just realized what we were about to see was an Aura Shards. Uh, <laughs> which would have... Um, would have been annoying... But I don't, he probably didn't have any creatures to play, so he probably wasn't willing to try to fight through that, plus losing your entire field. I mean, he would have been back to, what, one land drop more than likely? Because he'd have had to have thrown everything at me. And at that point, like, what do I, what do I lose if I let everything on my field die? Like, I lose nothing. I mean, what, he has to, what, to kill the weakest thing on my field, which is, what, ten tough? Yeah, so he would need, what? Yeah, five, five, yeah. Well, yeah, five if he wants to use the two twos. So he'd have to use over half of his tokens to kill one thing. On math, what, four, four? Okay, cool, You that's two tokens that... You get to kill one more thing, and that that's that's it. You get two, what, two, four, six. Yep, you don't kill anything else. And then everything else is still killing you. <laughs> so there was no getting past this. It's like, oh, you're going to mill the land deck. I'm like, yeah, yeah, because um, I have Crater Hoof in my hand the whole time. <laughs> I just needed to get to a bunch of dudes. And to make sure that you have to find your card every single turn just to keep making dudes. <laughs> so. And as you can see, like, we end the game on a perfect 40. You, know, like, you might as well have not done anything. But yeah, guys, we hope you guys enjoyed. If you and if you did, uh, if you have not already, please consider subscribing. Uh, it will mean a lot to us and continue to support our channel, our store. And the community as a whole, so we can get these videos out for those that want to see a more competitive deck, or those that want to see a, uh, a more budget deck, or a more you know friend fr uh, friend friendly uh, deck. I certainly would recommend that for people that want to keep a friendship alive. <laughs> but these sorts of decks are what I am more known for. Uh, you can pretty much ask anybody that knows me. Uh, these types of decks that just get really mean really quickly are typically my forte. Uh, so yeah, guys, if you want to see a specific deck or want to see how we build some of these decks, uh, we've done these in the past. We've shown off the builds in the past, but it's been, you know, uh, probably over a year at this point since we've done some of the builds or gone over some of the builds. Uh, so if you guys want to see any of the builds and to want me to explain, like, the mindset to go into building it, uh, or like I said, if you guys want to see, like, a, you know, 
a hundred dollar budget deck or a fifty dollar budget deck whatever you guys want to see like you know obviously magic online is cheaper than uh paper uh, so typically when we build the decks, we use real world prices and not uh, MTGO prices because, you know, MTGO, I can build a $5,000 deck for like $100. Um, so, yeah, we don't typically go by uh, MTGO prices uh, because, you know, we're assuming most people are probably going to play uh, paper and not MTGO. Uh, if you want to still want to play MTGO, that's fine. Just know that you're going to get the deck at like a third of the price. And, you know, granted, you know, we tend to use a lot of the same cards. So, you know, for us, you know, anytime you're going to be playing green, you're probably playing birds. You know, you're probably playing wood elves. Uh, you know, you're probably playing crater hoof. If you're playing green, you're probably, you're more than likely playing a soul ring. Uh, you're probably playing a mana crypt already. If you've been playing, you probably have a reliquary tower. Now, granted, none of those cards are, you know, expensive, but... Uh, you know, but you always look at it as, well, if I've already bought it once, I don't ever have to have it again for MTGO. So we try not to base our prices on, uh, MTGO. We try to base it on real world prices, uh, for the actual physical cards. So when we say $50, uh, budget deck, we, we genuinely mean you go pay $50 at TCG player or at some local card store and get the deck. Uh, so yeah. Well, guys, we definitely want to help players of all skill levels and all experiences to uh, better to enjoy magic as a whole and uh, better to enjoy their time in the card game community. Uh, like I said, we're going to be playing some other card games here soon. Uh, as soon as uh, I can uh, not work uh, th halfway through the night <laughs> and some of my other friends get on and are willing to... Uh, go on camera we'll uh we'll get some stuff done and as soon as you know hopefully we get some of these restrictions cleared and we can start actually getting uh events back together we'll we, we want to start doing like live stream uh tournaments and stuff like that i think that'd be really fun uh as soon as we can figure out a setup for that and get the equipment uh we would definitely like to be doing things like that uh so again guys if you enjoyed please hit that like and, and subscribe it really helps out and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. As far as when that will be, I can't say. Uh, but just keep an eye out. And uh, we'll try to make it uh, pleasantly surprising when we do post our next video or we come in for a live stream. Uh, so again, guys, we hope you enjoyed. Have a good uh, rest of your evening or day or whenever you just happen to be watching this video. <laughs> and good night.